Hey y'all, let's take a look at prime factors. This is less, this, this part is less algebra and just knocking down a few things about arithmetic. So let's take a look at these. You should know that a prime number is a number that is only divisible by itself and one. The smallest prime number is two. Then the next prime number is three, then five, then seven, then 11, then 13, and so on. In other words, you're talking about numbers that don't have any other factors at all except for themselves and one. Now two is an even number. It is the only even number that is a prime number. Every even number like four, six, eight, and 10, obviously you can divide by two, so those are out. So the other prime numbers from two will be, again, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and so on. Notice that all of those are odd numbers, and that's the way it's gonna be to infinity, all right? Composite numbers are composed of, you know, other prime numbers. So if you could have a number like, let's say, I don't know, let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, 42 or something like that, all right? Well, that is made up of seven, right, times time six, all right? And we we're, usually we'll break down numbers, or what we're doing today. We're not just gonna put seven times six because that is not a prime number. Instead of putting six, we'll put, okay, well, that's divisible into two and three. So we would say something like this, 42, you know, the, the prime numbers that are the factors of 42 would be two times three times seven. A lot of times we'll, we'll write them in order from least to greatest, and there we go, okay? All composite numbers are made up of prime numbers. Just if you keep breaking them down and breaking them down and breaking them down, you will eventually get a string of prime numbers like two and three and five and seven and 11 and so on. So let's do a few of those, okay? Express 80 as a product of prime factors. And this is what we're gonna do, something called the factor tree. So we'll take an 80 like this. You can do this any way you want. All right, well, I'm just gonna do this a couple, several ways. How about this? To just show that it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you do it right. All right, what I would do is you could go, well, okay, I'm gonna knock this down into factors of 80. You might recognize, let's say, oh, well, since this is an even number, it's two times 40. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna circle and hang on to the prime factors. Somebody else might say, oh, well, 80 is eight times 10. And you wouldn't circle either one of those because neither one is a prime factor. Somebody over here might say, oh yeah, I know this one. This is going to be um, 20 times four. Or maybe somebody knows, oh, 16 times five is 80. Five is a prime number, got it, okay. Well, over here, this person would go, okay, 40, that's another even number, so two times 20, and then, Oh, look, two times 10, and then, oh, there we go, I got two times five, okay? And look, these are all prime numbers left. So the person goes, okay, that's gonna be two times two times two times two, we'll just call it two to the fourth power, times five, and that is the breakdown of all the prime factors of 80. This other person would go, okay, eight is two prime, prime number, times four, oh, four is a prime number, that's two times two, as far as I can go on there, 10 is five times two and okay. So I've got one, two, three, four. That's four twos, two to the fourth power times, there's my five. And lo and behold, this looks exactly like this person over here. Doesn't matter what order you do in it. This person over here, the five is a prime number. Well, 16, we can bust that down into let's say four and four. And four and four goes two and two. And of course the other four goes two and two as well. Well, lo and behold, two times two times two times two times five, same thing here, doesn't matter how you do it, all right? Let's do 147 as a product of prime factors. And this is, this is an old trick. Sometimes they will use in like SATs, other standardized tests. You might look at this and go, oh, I don't know what in the world that is. I mean, I, you know, but you probably should know that any number, you can add the digits up, um, the one plus the four plus the seven, that adds up to 12. If a number's digits add up to a number like 12, which is divisible by three, then that number is also divisible by three. And you can tell immediately, you can knock out, if this is, ends in a seven, this is not going to have anything like two, four, six, eight, or 10. No even numbers will be a, a factor of this. So you can just try odd numbers. Well, again, you should know that three trick, but let's go ahead and put 147 and we know it's divisible by three because one plus four plus seven equals 12. 12 is divisible by three, so, so is this one. If you did the long division, you would get that this, equal to, this is equal to three times 49. Of course, we all know what 49 is, seven 
and 7. So you could write 3 times 7 squared if you want to do that. All right? Okay, let's, um, we're going to slightly twist it up a little bit about our equations, uh, solving equations, and coming up with algebraic equations based on sentences like this. So let's do this first. Pause it right now, and let's solve that equation. Go ahead and pause it. Okay, well, the sum we know is addition. So we're going to add twice a number, and 17 is equals 55. Okay, so 2x, oops, excuse me, I'm going to subtract the 17, which means I'll have 2x. 55 minus 17 is 38. Then I'll divide by 2, and 38 divided by 2 is 19. We've done those before, right? Okay, so we can do those, all right? This is a statement. Look at this word right here. That's the chapter title. Unequal quantities. Unequal quantities. It's a slightly different, a little bit more of a challenge, but I think you can do it. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. All right, let's look at this one. So I would write this down, this example down. So pause and copy and take this as a model. Okay. Twice a number is 42 less than 100 excuse me, negative 102, find the number. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Twice a number, let's go ahead and write that, is 42 less than 102. So what we can do is we could say, well, it's equal to 42 less than 102. So negative, excuse me, negative 102, but 42 less than that is minus 42. All right, find the number. Well, we have 2x that equals negative 144. We'll divide by 2, divide by 2, and negative divided by a positive is a negative. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and there we go. Okay. All right, we'll do another one of these. 5 times a number is 72 greater than the opposite of the number. So let's copy that down as well. So pause and copy. All right, let's just think about this for a second. Let's look at this like a seesaw, okay? You, you want a seesaw to have everything equal on this side and equal on that side, if you want it to balance. Five times a number is 72, okay, so in other words, we have five times a number here. That's 72 greater than the opposite of the number. Usually we'll have a, just an equal, oh, it's equal to, you know, the opposite of the number, which is like that. But the only problem is this over here is 72 greater than. In other words, what we really have is a seesaw that looks like this. We have a 5x here and we have a negative x. And this thing is 72, we'll call them pounds, but you like they're kids. This is 72 greater than this side over here. So there's two things we can do. Either, because this is 72 pounds, we'll call it, greater, we can subtract 72 from here and write ourselves an equation. Or we can just go, well, since this is 72 pounds heavier, what we can do to make things equal is to add 72 pounds on the right side. So that will be our equation. You could say five times a number is 72 greater. In other words, this is heavier. So we're gonna have to take a 72 and add it and then the opposite of the number would be negative x. Of course, if you wanted to put negative x plus 72, totally fine. Exactly the same thing. No worries. And that's our equation. All right? It might take you a few weeks to get the hang of this. No problem. Don't worry about it. All right? Let's go ahead and get rid of our negative x on the right by adding x to both sides. That's a 6x, and that's a 72. And we divide by 6, and of course, 72 divided by 6 is a 12. There we go. You can visualize the uh, seesaw that's helpful for you to figure out what's going on. Let's do that again on this one. If the sum of twice a number and negative 14 is multiplied by 2, the result is 12 greater than the opposite of the number, blah, blah. Okay, we don't need to write this part here. Okay, so we have a seesaw. All right, let's visualize this seesaw. The sum of twice a number, if negative 14 is multiplied by 2, the result is 12 greater than blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, okay, we've got twice a number and negative 14. The whole thing is multiplied by 2. So we have the sum of twice a number and negative 14. So we have 2x 
minus 14. If it's multiplied by 2, that's what it looks like. All right? This is 12 greater than the right side. So this is sitting here like this. It's 12 greater than this side. This side is called the opposite of the number. So what's this side look like? It's negative x, right? So if this blah, 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 blah is multiplied to, in other words, this side of the, of the seesaw, this is 12 greater. Ooh, it's hanging down by 12. It's, being, it's got more 12. So to make things even, so this side of the seesaw balances out, we're going to have to add 12, we'll call them pounds, to the right side. That makes sense? Okay, so you're going to add 12 to the right side. And there you go. So we can do this part, right? Let's just go ahead and I'll, I'll write in bigger uh, letters and numbers here. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and just distribute the 2. That's going to be 4x. Then 2 times negative 14 is negative 28. And that will be negative x plus 12. Okay, I will add 28 to both sides. You, there we go. 4x is equal to negative x plus, and 12 plus 28 is 40. And we're going to clean up the uh, negative x on the right side by adding an x there. And we'll add an x there as well. And we have a 5x that equals 40. And then 5 times what gives you 40? Well, 40 divided by 5. That's what it is. It's 8. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at this one. Go ahead and pause it. You set this one up. Draw a seesaw if you need to. Set it up. Go ahead and pause it and set it up. All right. Go ahead and do it. Okay. Look what we've got this time. We've got 5 times a number. And this part is 21 less than twice the opposite of a number. In other words, you like that. It's going like this. This part is 21 less than twice the opposite of the number. In other words, here's the equal sign. And on the other side, twice the opposite of the number. Well, 2 times a number is 2x. But 2 times the opposite would be that, okay? But the only problem is, you know, this side over here is 21 less than. Less than. So it's kind of like hanging up in the air. It doesn't weigh as much as this part over here. Well, we don't want to add 21 over here. That'll make this, you know, that'll make this seesaw side go even farther down to the ground. So what we need to do on the right is we need to subtract 21 from this side, right? If we subtracted 21, then our seesaw will look like this and look even, okay? So that's our equation. We have a 5x equals negative 2x and then a minus 21. And by the way, if you could have also said if you wanted to, oh, this one's hanging up in the air. It doesn't weigh as much. I'm going to add 21 to the left side. Perfectly fine. That'd be absolutely a good way to do it. You're good. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead and solve this one now. We're going to add 2x, add 2x. That means 7x is the same thing as negative 21. Well, we just divide by 7, right? x is equal to negative 3. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's try the practice set. Try A, pause it, and come back. Okay, A is going to be 4. Pause it and try B. B will be negative 2. Try C. This is the breakdown of C. That's going to be prime numbers will be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. That is 108 broken down. All right, let's go ahead and pause it and try D. Okay, D will be broken down. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You could put 2 to the 4th power if you wanted to, which is, that's actually 16. Then times 5 to the 2nd power if you want to. So breaking down 400 looks just like that. Okay, all right. You guys have a great day, and uh, good luck on today's practice problems. Take care. See you all.